sung tonight or sang or singed? Sing, sing, or sung. Which of the songs that we did tonight, sang tonight, was written by someone from the Church of Christ? Oh, that's not it. <laughs> Jesse Brown Pounds. Anywhere with Jesus. It was on my final exam of American Restoration History. Absolutely. So, which I made a, a 98 on, by the way. I, yeah, I was real proud of that. Real proud of that. So, anyway... Uh, let me ask you a question to start with tonight. What is the most important thing? <laughs> and why is it, what he said, by the way, for those of you, he said, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. And why is that the most important thing? TV. Through him, we can be saved. We can have salvation. The most important thing is getting to heaven. Amen? I mean, more than anything else, that's what people need to understand is how to get to heaven, right? You know, sometimes we get caught up on, on a bunch of other things, but really what people need to understand is you can know that you're going to heaven. I have, you know, and I challenged you guys a couple of weeks ago to, to start asking people, do you, if you died today, do you know if you'd go to heaven or hell? I'll never forget when I was living in North Dallas, I worked for a company that was based in Denton. Uh, it took me about 30 minutes, 45 minutes to get there, and there was a period, that I, I did a lot of traveling for the company, but there was about a two-month period I worked in their office every day, and, and I had a couple of different routes that I drove to break the monotony, and one of them had a billboard on the side of the road that I would drive by every morning I went that way, and that was the question on that billboard. If you died today, do you know for certain that you would be in heaven? And, and I used to drive by there, and of course, I was young then. I was early 20s. And you know, early 20s, you, you don't ever think about those kind of things, you know? And so I just kind of drive by the sign, going, yeah, some r religious wacko group put that up there, you know? But as life goes on, that question becomes a little more significant. If you died today, on your way home, do you know for sure that you would go to heaven? And, and, I, and I challenge you to start asking people that question. And I have been waiting for the opportunity to, to ask someone that question. I met with Lim the other day. We had breakfast over there at High V. And typically at High V, when I go to breakfast, there will be people there studying their Bibles. And so I, I was waiting, you know, because as soon as Lim and I finished breakfast, I was going to pounce on one of them. I was just going to go up to him and say, hey, I noticed you're reading your Bible. I've got a question for you. If you died today, do you know if you would go to heaven? And if they said yes, I was going to say, how do you know that? Teach me that so I can know that. You know, kind of pretending because I wanted to hear what they had to say. And if they said, well, I hope so, I was going to use that as a door to walk right in and say, you know, I can show you how you can know. Because, church, we can know. I mean, for God so loved the world, Y'all finish it with me. That he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Who said that? It, it's written in John's Gospel. But if you look in your Bibles, I mean, if you've got a red letter edition, probably most of you will notice that it's written in red. So who said that? Jesus. Does Jesus lie? Absolutely not. And so he says, whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. When Peter preached the very first sermon on the day of Pentecost, and the people finally understood that Jesus was the Christ, and they believed in him, and they said to Peter and those with him, they said, what do we do? 
Now that they believe, what do we do? And Peter said, repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Be, be baptized. I, I misquoted that. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins. And you'll receive the Holy Spirit. And, and we're taught over and over again that when we believe and when we repent and when our sins are washed away, in the water of baptism, we receive the Spirit as a seal, as a stamp of, of guarantee that we will be with Him forever. And, and I think sometimes, you know, most of the time on Sunday mornings, uh, when I preach, I, I preach about how we ought to live, how we're called to live out this life that we have and, and to show other people through our lives and, and sometimes we need to go back and just remember how awesome it is that we have eternal life. Blessed assurance. You know, and I love that song, you know, Anywhere with Jesus. And, and you know, the song's about I cannot wait to be in your presence, dwelling in your presence, surrounded by your glory. Isn't it going to be awesome when we step into that paradise? And we know that that's what He's got for us. I want to share with you, we're going to read through several scriptures this evening. I was going to start in 1 Peter, but, but I, I'm not going to start there. We're actually going to start in Romans chapter 6. One of my favorite passages, but I'll tell you why we were going to start in 1 Peter. 1 Peter begins, it's a letter written to Christians who are struggling and who are, are enduring some hardships. And, and Peter writes to them and he says, you know, I know that you, you've gone through struggles of various kinds. These have come uh, to test you. And, but, but the rest of the letter is a, a letter of encouragement of, of all the blessings that we have. You know, and sometimes we just need that, that boost and that reminder of, of the awesome gift that we have, it's also called the good news. <clears throat> the good news that you and I will spend eternity in heaven because we believe that Jesus is the Christ. We've been buried with Him in baptism for the remission of our sins, washed away, we've received the Spirit, and we're living that faithful life. And in Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 3, Paul says, Lord, don't you know that all of us who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death. We were, therefore, buried with Him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead to the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. Paul is saying, we know that we were buried with Him and just like God raised Him up, God's going to raise us up. There's no doubt about that in Paul's mind. Or don't you know, he says. In verse 5 he goes on, if we've been united with Him like this in His death, we will certainly also be united with Him in His resurrection. For we know that our old self was crucified with Him so that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. Because anyone who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with Him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, He cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over Him. The death He died, He died to sin once for all. But the life He lives, He lives to God. And I love verse 11. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. Church, we've been given eternal life. We've been raised already just as Christ was. And we will see that, we will experience that on that day that He returns. I want you to turn over into chapter 8 of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8, the first four verses. Paul says, Therefore there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Is that not good news? Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. 
Because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so He condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature but according to the Spirit. The, the righteous requirements of the law have been fully met in us. Is that not good news? There is now no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. Is that not good news? Amen. Amen. For those who live by the Spirit. Look down at verse 9. You, however, are, not, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And then look over in verse 31 of chapter 8. Verse 31 through 39. What then shall we say in response to this? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare His own Son, but gave Him up for us all, how will He not also, along with Him, graciously give all these things? Who, who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is He that condemns? Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God, and He is also interceding for us. Who should, shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced, Paul says, that neither death nor life, neither angel nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Is that not good news? Amen. I mean, just to know that, that He loves us so much, that He gave us so much so that we can be with Him forever and that there's nothing that's going to ever go on in this life that can separate us. Now we sometimes think that, we think, you know, everything is too bad, everything is too hard. Why is God picking on me? You know that old Charlie Brown song, Why is everybody always picking on me? And we need to remember that God is with us always. And if God is with us, who's against us? No one. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. We've been redeemed. We've been bought with His blood. We've been given His Spirit. Is that not good news? Amen. <clears throat> Look over in Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 3. Paul says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For He chose us in Him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. In love He predestined us to be adopted as His sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with His pleasure and will to the praise of His glorious grace which He has freely given us in the one He loves. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that He lavished on us. And all with all wisdom and understanding. And He made known to us the mystery of His will, according to His good pleasure which He purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment, to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head, even Christ. 
in Him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of Him who works out everything in conformity with, his, with the purpose of His will, in order that we, who were the first to hope in Christ, might be for the praise of His glory. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. And having believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is the deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. We received a seal, a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. It's not, a, it's not something we have to think, you know, well, I hope I get saved. Church, if we've been buried with Christ, if we've been baptized for the forgiveness of our sins, our sins are washed away. And it's our sin that separates us from God. And that's done away with in Jesus Christ. We receive His Spirit to guarantee that we will enter into eternal life. Over in chapter 2 of Ephesians, beginning in verse 1, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. And all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our sinful nature and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature objects of wrath. But because of His great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up. Notice the tense there. He has raised us up with Christ and seated us with Him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages He might show the incomparable riches of His grace expressed in His kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works so that no one can boast. For we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. Drop down into verse 19. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus Himself as the chief cornerstone. And in Him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. Look over in Colossians. Last place I want us to look this evening. Colossians chapter 1 beginning in verse 10. Paul says, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please Him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to His glorious might, so that you may have, a, have great endurance and patience and joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. For He has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and He's brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. I want us to look at that just a little bit. Notice in verse 12, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you. That's already been done. Those of us who were buried with Christ in baptism, we've already been qualified. 
How many of you watched the Olympics? Or watched a little bit of it? You know, it, it's always funny, uh, or not funny, I, I think it had to be one, would have to be one of the most nerve-wracking things to have to do these qualifying runs, you know? And, and you run just to win your heat because the top three qualify and get to go on. One little thing can go wrong and you don't qualify. But you know what? Every one of us has already been qualified to get into heaven. Because God has done it. And His Word says it. The Bible is right, as Marshall Keeble used to say. And then going on here, uh, from verse 12, and in verse 15, for He has rescued us. Perfect tense. It's already happened. He's already rescued us from the dominion of darkness and He's already brought us into the kingdom of the Son He loves. Do you realize that we're standing in eternity already? We're standing in the kingdom of God. We're forgiven. We're qualified. Justified. Sanctified. Holified. Whatever other five you want to think of, we're there. And church, this is what we have to share with the people that are out there. Because there are so many of them that don't even know that they can have this certainty. I'll never forget being at the little church in Jayton, Texas one time, and Richard Rogers was standing there preaching. It was probably within a year of the time that he died, and he was talking about standing at the edge of his grave. And he said, and I look in there, it's the most awesome thing because it's glory and it's comfort and, and, and it's warmth and it's, it's everything that I have lived my whole life for and I cannot wait till that day when I step into that kingdom because this, this world in the best it can ever be is just a mere shadow of what I'm going to find there Church, that's what we need to share with our friends. That's what we need to share with the people that we run into every day. And we need to aggressively share that with them because they don't know it. And there are so many churches out here that don't teach that. So many churches that just teach how to live a good life. You know, you can go to a, a rotary club and learn how to live a good life but the church is to teach people the good news that you can have eternal life. And we have that. A friend of mine said that Christians are kind of like a, a beggar showing other beggars where to get free bread. And that's what we are. None of us are worthy to have received what we've been given, but we've been given so much. It's our job to go out and share that with those who aren't worthy of it either. Amen? Yeah. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank You for what You have given us. That You've called us to be Your church. Father, we're sinful people and we know it. We stumble. We, we fall. We still have so many shortcomings and yet You have glorified us. For that, Father, we, we lift our lives before you. We ask you to mold us and shape us and change us. But, Father, more than anything, give us that passion. Put that fire in our bellies that we have to share this good news with other people. Help us to look out in the world around us and when we see other people, to, to see people who may not be going to heaven and we know the answer. Help us to share that boldly. Not, not ever be ashamed of, of the good news that we have. Not to be ashamed of the eternal life that you have brought us into. Father, help us live in that kingdom that you've already brought us into. And Father, this evening, there may be someone here who does not have this certainty. Somebody that may not be qualified yet. Someone who may have doubts or fears. And I pray, Father that you will bring that person home. That tonight, 
that person will submit to your son and be buried with him in baptism and be delivered by you out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of the son that you love. Father, I lift this up to you in Jesus' name. Amen.